In this video, we're going to introduce organic molecules and talk about functional groups. What makes something organic? What qualifies? Well, carbon-based molecules are organic. Let's start with the simplest of our organic molecules, a simple hydrocarbon made of one carbon and four hydrogen. We call this molecule methane, so otherwise known as natural gas. This is a very simple molecule to fuel. We burn it, we use it to heat our homes. But if I take this hydrogen off and make a little chain and add another carbon, filling it up with hydrogen, now I don't have methane anymore, I have ethane. And if I take a hydrogen off of here, let's uh, take this hydrogen off and add another carbon, and we'll put that there put these hydrogens back on. Now I have propane. And I could do it again and grab another carbon and let's bring this up here. Take this hydrogen off. Add another carbon and fill this up with hydrogen. I would have butane. Butane's the fuel they use in cigarette lighters. Now what do all these molecules have in common? methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. Well, they're all fuels. Even though I'm extending this hydrocarbon and making it longer, the general properties of this molecule doesn't change. But how could I change this molecule? What if I took this off? What could I add to it to change the property? If I added this group of molecules, this OH group, called an alcohol group, all of a sudden I don't have methane. I have a molecule called methanol. And if I were to change it like this, I would have ethanol. Methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol. These are all alcohols. So adding this one group, calling it a functional group, brings along with it a unique set of properties that can change uh, the properties of general hydrocarbon. In this video, we're going to talk about functional groups. The first of our functional groups are the, are the hydroxyls, the OH functional group. This is, makes a group, a family of molecules called the alcohols. And the interesting characteristic about this functional group is that it confers to this molecule a polarity because of this oxygen to hydrogen bond. If you remember from our properties of water video, this bond is definitely going to be a polar bond with the electrons spending more of their time near the oxygen so that we have a negative end and a, and a positive end. And so it makes this whole molecule polar. Our next functional group is the carboxyl group. Now carboxyl group is written as COOH, which is kind of unusual. We'll see why in just a minute when we draw it. It makes up a class of molecules called the carboxylic acids. When you add a carboxyl group to a generic hydrocarbon, you will make it into a carboxylic acid. Well, let's see how it's drawn. When we look at the structural diagram, we see why we don't just write this as CO2H. That would be a little um, deceiving as to the structure because it's really C double bond O bond OH. It is this whole structure that is the functional group. Sometimes people mistake this for two different functional groups, but this entire structure is the carboxyl group. We don't want to write it that way. And we said that it makes a class called the carboxylic acids. So in what way is it acidic? We have to remember what acids do. Let's move that out of the way. So when we place this molecule in water, we know that acids, when placed in water, tend to release hydrogen ions. And so that this hydrogen will dissociate, creating an ion. And it will leave behind this structure. So it will donate that proton. It's a proton donor. It's acidic in nature. It's not uncommon to see carboxyl groups drawn like this with the H already off and a negative sign on the O. Our next functional group is the amino group, which we draw NH2, or we designate NH2. It makes up a class of molecules called the amines. When you add an NH2 to a hydrocarbon, you make it into the amine family. When we draw this structurally, it's an N. Uh, here's a hydrocarbon that N and two H's on it, so NH2. 
And when we look at the properties of this group, the amino, the amine groups are basic. Now, if you remember what bases are, bases are substances that are proton acceptors. So the nature of this molecule is that it will accept a proton and become positively charged. So you'll often see these drawn as an NH3 with a positive charge on it. So we have our amine group. Our next functional group is the phosphate group. When we draw the phosphate group, it's pretty complex. It's this entire structure here bit onto the end of a, a hydrocarbon, but luckily we very seldom have to draw that structure and we'll often just abbreviate with a P with a circle around it, which is uh, nice to be able to do. Now the property that this functional group brings to a molecule uh, is like the hydroxyl group, uh, it's polar. So adding a phosphate group to a molecule will infer a polarity to that molecule. Oftentimes you'll see the phosphate group written with these hydrogens pulled off, uh, having been donated in an acidic way, and, and the negative charges being left behind, which gives us a, a charge also, uh, actually making it even more polar. Now there are other functional groups, but the, the ones that we've talked about are the ones we're going to focus on, the uh, hydroxyl, the carboxyl, the amine, and the um, the phosphate group. So those are the functional groups. I think if you could put them in a chart with the formula structure and some of the properties, that'd be a good kind of summary. In part two, we're going to look at biomolecules, the large macromolecules that make up living things, like carbohydrates and lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Make sure you look for part two coming soon.